Okay, hi everyone. Um, we are uh, basically going to share with you um, the skills, the behaviors required to become a world-class consultant. This is part of a consulting methods class that is offered by the IXL Center. And today we have Tyler McNally who was at the Monitor Group and myself, um, I used to be at both Monitor as well as the Alpha Little Group uh, in management consulting. And the question we're going to try and answer is what are the behavioral and skills required to be a world-class consultant? And we're going to basically break the questions down into three different formats. The first one is, how does the world perceive consultants and therefore how do consultants project themselves in that environment? The second question is, how do consultants interact amongst each other to be a world-class, uh, high-performing organization? And the third one is just general advice to those of you in the audience who, is, who would like to become a consultant or a world-class manager. What, you know, what is our advice for you to be, be that? so that you can be successful in your future endeavors. Okay, so I think when people hire management consultants, um, they typically, they have a problem, and it's typically a problem they can't solve within their organization, or they have a message they want to communicate in the organization, and they like to have the, the confidence of having a management consulting team behind them to make that. So I think the key things they look for is uh, being knowledgeable, uh, being capable, and really understanding the client's issue. So if I'm a client and I hire a team of consultants, I want to make sure that they're to, there to help me and to enable me to succeed with the issues and the problems and the challenges that I have. You know, the reason that consultants are able to charge so much money is because they need to be right every time. They need to, when they come in and present a report, there has to be not only the, the citations and, and the data to back up that piece of uh, information, but the consultant brings with them the knowledge of you know, having worked very hard on this project for the past six months or to a year. So there's a lot of, of work that goes on behind the scenes, a lot of hard work, and a lot of being uh, very receptive to requests from the client to really back up the client so when he goes and makes the recommendation, he knows that he's got the consultant behind him and all the work that went into doing it. In addition, the other experience I, I've seen is they look at you to see if you're a trusted advisor. And a trusted advisor has got a lot more other meanings behind it. Um, the word trust is in there and the word advice is in there. Right? So the advisor part must mean that you must have competency and capability that you had mentioned to some difficult questions a client is actually struggling through. And the word trusted is more so around the fact that the advice you're giving is genuine. The advice you're giving is in the best intent of the customer or the client. I think in, from what I've seen as corporations have become more casual, consultants have tended to follow that path. So because they're not based in New York in kind of their own little environment and they have to be at the client site and they want to, on the one hand, they want to stand out and say, look, we're here to help and, and we're different and, and we're, you know, we're bringing the best minds to bear. But on the other hand, they want to blend in. So I think there's sort of a casualness that comes, you know, the ties have perhaps gone away in, in some settings if, they, if they're not formal presentations. Consultants um, are neat, they're immaculate in how they dress, they present themselves very well, um, but they make sure that it's not at the expense of looking flashy or show-offish. It's always at the point where they're reflecting or mirroring the culture of the client. If the client is casual, then the consultants tend to be more casual. And there may be a different uh, gradation between the different organizations and consulting, as some are maybe a little bit more formal than others. But in general, um, if you were to see a management consultant, it's, it's, it would be very hard for you to find a negative comment about them. I see that. They, in, in, my, in my view, I mean, they perceive consultants to be incredibly, incredibly receptive, um, incredibly timely, you know, the kind of the expression being on time is being late, being early is being on time for consultants. Um, they want, when they have a formal presentation, all of the documents are laid out on the table. They're ready to go before the client's there. Um, and it's also, in a sense, you know, being on call, not really 24-7, but probably, you know, six days a week, 20 hours a day, they're able to meet requests very quickly. And that always impresses clients to say, you know, man, if, if only my team could be as responsive as this consulting team, I could get a lot more done. talk around that. Okay. Um, so what I've found is, okay, so consulting teams need to be very responsive. 
they need to tackle very difficult problems and they need to do so very quickly but at a high level of quality and what I've seen work the best is a consulting team which is both uh, collaborative and hierarchical and it uses the different styles when it needs to so on the one hand when you're trying to brainstorm potential solutions or different ways of tackling a challenge the best consulting teams sit around the table and, and everyone has an equal voice and everyone can brainstorm uh, on the other hand when you're getting close to a presentation or when you know it's time to start converging and you need an answer for a client you shift into a hierarchical mode and you know it is very top-down and the collaborative mode enables you to get a lot of different ideas on the table and to tap into the knowledge of all the smart people around you but then at the end of the day when you need to get stuff done you shift in this hierarchical mode and everyone has a role to play and they play that role very well. So, so here's the challenge, I mean in, in an environment of consulting what, what it really says is we respect the, the intellect and brilliance of every individual so as a result every individual needs to speak out, they can't be shy and they can't be uh, holding back because that brain, that experience of that human being is being highly valued. And so we do expect uh, consultants to share their ideas, especially when they're in the free forming, the brainstorming period of the, of the meetings. And that at some point some decisions will be made and will try and converge and close in into certain decisions and move forward. Those decisions remain the decisions of somebody senior. And that person is accountable for a bad decision or a good decision as a result of that. And then the whole team again converges around that and gets things done. And so at that point, you've got the second characteristic. The first one is we're looking at you for ideas, so leadership. And the second one is followership. And you've got to be able to do both lead and follow. And that yin-yang is the balance that you're contrasting.